So what I've done is um, I've basically drafted up a painting in three stages just to give you an example of the different steps that I would work through when I was normally painting. It takes me quite a long time to, uh, to do a painting because we've only got quite a short period of time. Um, here is one I prepared earlier. <laughs> the inspiration for my work really comes from the environment um, and my love of sort of animals and wildlife and observing uh, people as well sometimes that uh, pass through the village and so on. It, quite often it involves um, animals or between um, a squirrel and a butterfly or a dog and a bee or something like that. So there's almost a little uh, narrative going on in the image. So what I normally have is an idea in my head of something that I think I'd like to paint that, that might be fun to do. And I'll start with some uh, visual reference. It's so easy now. When I was at art school, we used to go to the library and look up books and things like that. You know, but uh, nowadays, um, it's very easy to, uh, to go onto the internet and to look up photographs or to use your own photographs as a visual reference. So that's uh, just one of some flowers, sort of wildflower. And um, this is a, another painting I had done that I thought I'll print out a copy of that just to remind myself of what I had painted earlier because I thought I'll paint one on a similar theme. And what I wanted to, to do for this painting was to have uh, a series of dogs running across the canvas and I thought I'll paint some different types of dogs, so I've got a little uh, terrier there running and a, a collie and a, a, a Labrador. So these are all the elements that I'm gathering together and my bumblebees which I took from another painting I had done, I thought I'll use those, the same bumblebees. Um, so I have all these visual references there oh, and my butterfly guide. So once I've gathered all that together, I'll sit down with that on my drawing board and I'll do a sketch. Just a, an outline drawing really, just to give me an idea of the composition um, and how that's going to work. So what I've done from my sketch is um, I've just really scaled that up onto my canvas board. I like to paint on board because I, I think it's a lot easier than canvas to work with because you can lean on it and it doesn't bend or kink. And I paint it with a, um, a modelling paste. So I put on two layers of modelling paste to let them dry in between and then I give them a good sand down and then I put a layer of primer on. Um, it gives you a, a nice textured um, surface. It really takes the, the paint well. Do many of you use acrylic paints or do you yes. prefer? Yeah. Some people prefer oils or... I work in layers and that's the great thing about working with acrylic paints because they dry so quickly. They're just so versatile, they're fantastic. So I would start just to uh, paint in my first layer and that's what I'm going to do at this end of the canvas. So I'm using a very bright green and a white lots of kitchen roll and um, these paint pots are great things as well. I don't know if any of you have ever used one of these. I only invested uh, in one a couple of years ago myself as a treat but <laughs> it's a bit sad really. But uh, they have a base in the bottom with holes in and it means um, when you're washing your brush if you have the left, leftover paint falls through to the bottom so it keeps your water clean and it keeps your colours clean so they don't get all muddy because you're not washing your brush in uh, muddy water. And I'm going to start to paint in a first layer. I'm using quite a big brush and the first layer you're really just blocking in the colours. You're just wanting to cover the canvas and just sort of fill out the, the white. And of course the general rule of thumb is that you have the, you know, the sort of lighter 
colours in the background and your stronger colours in the foreground. I notice Elsa that you paint on different sized canvases, different sized boards. Some small, some large, some long and thin. Is there any rationale behind that or just whatever takes your fancy at the time? <coughs> it's nice to give the, uh, the galleries a selection of different sizes so you have different uh, price points for, for people really. Yeah. Um, so obviously the small, the small painting is quite affordable for yeah. most people whereas the big ones are uh, a bit more expensive and if you're putting in maybe half a dozen pictures to a gallery they like to have a variety of uh, sizes. Yeah, Sort of painted in most of the background around mm -hmm. this uh, collie dog here. I don't paint very with very thick paint really which is why I think I like using the modelling paste to give a bit of um, texture. The advantage of not painting layers of very thick paint is that if you decide to change the outline of something, you're not left with a, a ridge of um, paint. It's easier to paint light on dark. So for my collie dog here, I'm going to make the, um, the first layer of the fur, I'm going to make really dark and then the subsequent layers and the, the, uh, the furry texture that will go on will be lighter. Do you have a painting gouache? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was from the heart. <laughs> uh, very, it's very difficult to paint in gouache. Very difficult. Uh, water, watercolours. Does anybody here paint with watercolours? Yeah. So difficult. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> and gouache as well. So, it's so difficult to paint with. The wonderful thing about uh, acrylic paint is um, if you make a mistake, you just paint over it because it, it dries and you paint over it. It's so hard using uh, watercolours and uh, gouache. Can I ask how you mix the black paint? Um, this is a, I'm using a Payne's Grey and just a touch of um, t titanium white. So I'm just going to use a slightly lighter grey for this, uh, the legs in the foreground. Do any of you have your own animals that you use as models? Mm. Yes. <laughs> They're a great inspiration, I think. Mm. So this is uh, our collie dog, Jack, who features in quite a few of my paintings. He's six now. Very happy being a pet. Loves being a studio dog. That's his absolute favourite. Th thinks he's... Um, done a hard day's work if he's spent a day in the studio snoozing on the daybed. <laughs> so I'm just putting in a base layer of white and at the moment I'm not really worrying too much about shading. I'm just really trying to cover the canvas. Once you've got that first layer on I think you start to feel like you're really making progress. Sometimes it feels a bit daunting when you've got a, an empty canvas sitting in front of you. Do any of you, you think that? You've got along, you look at it and you think, oh. <laughs> but once you get that first layer on, you can start to feel that you're making a bit of progress. The other thing I have used recently, Liquitex have brought out some acrylic inks, which are permanent, <coughs> and, and uh, they're quite good for adding detail. So you can see what I've start, started to do here with the first third. I've just sketched it out and uh, I'm just really filling in a base layer. So that's how I would start with the whole of the painting. So the next section that uh, I completed earlier is one where I've, I've got that first layer on. So the canvas is starting to fill up. And what I'm going to do now is uh, I've, I've let that dry 
important thing to remember with acrylic paint is if you try to paint a second layer on top of a first layer and the first layer isn't dry, it will start to lift the paint off. So it's very important that you let it dry between layers. And it doesn't take that long to dry. Sometimes it's just a few hours will be enough. Um, sometimes I'll leave it overnight and then I'll come back to it the next day. And then I'll start to add on the second layer. And with the second layer, I'm starting to think more about tones and shadows and uh, a bit add, I'm adding a bit more detail to it. So I'm just starting to paint on a second layer. And this will really start to thicken up now and uh, it'll start to you'll really start to see a difference in the depth of the colour. We had a week up north in um, Sutherland in uh, June and uh, so I've done a few paintings since then with this sort of background in them um, which I mean it could actually it's very similar to the Lake District in some ways uh, but just such pretty hills. So again, I'm just building on a second layer here to the hills. And of course the hills in the distance um, are always fairly light and then colours get stronger as they come towards you. So once you get the second layer on, it really starts to come together. The colours really start to thicken up. This was a very fashionable colour in the galleries last year. One of the gallery owners was telling me that uh, all the paintings that were selling had a touch of cobalt teal in them. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to start on the dog and I am going to start to do a bit of um, colour mixing now. So I'm going to make them lighter at the top. That's where the light source is coming from. So uh, I've mixed in some white with my paints grey. And I'm going to make the top of his back quite light. And I'm going to go back to the darker. So this is really the second, the second stage. I'm starting to add more toning to any three-dimensional features that I'm wanting to bring out. It does blend very well when it's uh, when it's wet, but you just need to make sure you work fairly quickly with it because once it dries you won't be able to blend it at all obviously. So I'm going to go back to my smaller brush. The legs in the background I'm going to paint them in so that you can tell they're behind the legs in the foreground and that will start to give it a bit more depth. And I'm going to add a lighter layer to the legs in the foreground just so they stand out. I do like all my animals to be happy <laughs> so I'm going to give them a nice uh, smiley mouth. And in this layer I would start to add in a lot of the texture. So you really need to use the feathering man brush, don't know if any of you use these, uh, to add a bit of texture. I'm just uh, mixing up a slightly lighter shade of grey and I'm going to start to add on some feathery layers and you need to remember of course the way that the fur would run. I'm doing this from a slightly different angle because I wouldn't, I wouldn't normally paint from this angle. So that's just given us a bit of a texture to start to work into. Wash that out and then I'm going to use a rigger brush is um, quite a good one for the fur now to start and add in a bit more detail and I'm using the paint really quite thinly and I'm just going to start to work into the base layer that I've laid 